Marjorie McClure Special School in Kent is part of the school's sports partnership. Planning, equipment and even the rules of games are constantly adapted to ensure everyone is included and pupils are learning to become sports leaders. PE activities also support other areas of the curriculum such as numeracy, literacy and ICT. Some people find it quite strange that a special school for pupils with physical disabilities places such a high emphasis on PE and it's something that we think is really, really important um, because for our young people their access to life in general is very limited. One of the things they do enjoy is often sports and physical development is very, even more important for our young people than perhaps mainstream people. The mundane business of getting the register done and a... A Friday afternoon. Advanced skills teacher Guy Wilkins works to facilitate pupil participation through PE. Yeah, I'm Guy Wilkins. I'm the, the PE teacher here primarily. I wear other hats, one of advanced skills teacher where, and one of school sport coordinator part-time and one of primary link teacher within the sports partnership. It's a very varied job. Helen's got two thumbs up. How well do these three sports leaders do? Marjorie McClure School is a, an all-age special school from 3 to 19. It's primarily for children with physical disabilities and medical conditions. Some of the children have come here with serious gaps in their learning, so there's all sorts of other difficulties that uh, children experience besides those physical disabilities and medical conditions. QCA have done a lot of studies and there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and real evidence to show that PE, where it's valued highly by schools, is having a real impact. As a small school, I can see it every day. It's reflecting in their behaviour, their academic standards. Five and nothing. Well, it looks like 50, doesn't it? The confidence in succeeding at things, the self-esteem, the belief. What sticker would you like? The bell? The balls? The football? The Accepting other people's strengths and weaknesses, working in the groups that they work communicating. Who feels they could introduce this gentleman behind me and say who he is? I know he can do it for himself, but I want... I think uh, pupils here get a lot of dealing with adults. You know, many of them are seeing medical professionals and, and therapists, so they can't escape adults, really. And unlike a, a child in a mainstream school who can get away from an adult input, they can't get away with much here. They're very good at speaking at adult level. Is this Tony Sports? Uh, what, what's your surname? Uh, Joseph. What? Tony Joseph. No, I don't want to call you Joseph. No, right. <laughs> Just want to call me Tony? Yes. They don't seem to worry about making a fool of themselves, and they don't. They're, they're very able, and we, all of us in school, feel very proud when they, when they do do that. And, uh, what? I'm here to do cricket. And he wants to do cricket, and he's a good, good, good coach for Look, us. Thank you. I work for London Community Cricket Association, and I'm a development thank officer. Thank you very much. Did you like that? I like it. What we do is we just work in primarily special needs schools and normally just work with groups that are outside the mainstream, like on housing estates and emotional behavioural difficulty school, moderate learning. These are some of the signals, okay? If a batter hits four runs, all right, that's the signal the umpire will do. It's very difficult to actually work to a lesson plan, so everything you do is normally off the cuff or you're actually standing, talking to the kids, actually thinking up a lesson plan at the same time. You know, you've got varieties of children, frames, wheelchairs, some of them can walk various disabilities so you've always thinking on your feet and just thinking up different games that are adaptable you know and games that they can work with and, and enjoy but with the mainstream school you can work to a lesson plan and it can just flow really easy but in, in special needs it's very very different. Uh, Tony we've done a little bit of um, static actions and some bit of mobilising using our shoulders do we need to do a little bit of pulse raising with the ball yeah, should we do that one? Guys, we need to get a heart rate pump in now, right? So get ready for the for the cricket that we're going to do. Right, so don't forget you're moving. Right, Thomas is the runner. Two laps. My role is trying to include every pupil so that they enjoy taking part in PE and school sport. For me, that's making sure they succeed, and that sometimes means splitting groups so that one group may be doing something that's very different to another group, working sometimes in ones or twos, sometimes as a whole group. OK, Nick, who's going to be into bat first? Luke. What we're going to do, we're going to try and develop the game, all right? Rather than if you hit a really nice shot, you only score one. Let's go, Nick. Hold that ball. Yes! 
So maybe if you hit the crash mat on the side, you can score more. The ball that we're using, so is it safe? We hit it through cones or past the cones, we get six. You need to hide the ball. It is a hard ball, I think. And it's a and sir, sir, sir. My aim in PE is for them to be succeeding at something try and adapt and modify the activity so that they can succeed, but they get a tremendous sense of self-confidence, self-belief by succeeding. Put your hands up if you think of an idea that we could do after three balls without a strike, what should we do for Sarah? What you could do is bring this thing in, this which where you would put the ball on top and she would um, strike it instead of me bowling it to her. We're just realising what, what we're doing there. We're differentiating as we go. Shortening the curriculum down, missing out bits, inventing my own bits. And, and that could be hitting the ball off of a tee, or it could be striking the ball below head height. Now, should we let Sarah have one swing at it and then bring the tee in? Yeah. Yeah? No. So we, we make up the rules as collaboration between the pupils, and, and they're very good at it. And we're always sharing and learning from each other. And I've learned something today that a lot of my differentiation is as we go. The best moments at that collaboration are when, when I stand back. The, the pupils have got very good at that, I suppose, because that's what they've been doing year on year in their journey through the school. Teacher interference is, is, is bad news sometimes, so if you look at the game now, uh, the game's going much better without me. Here we go, Nicky's not managed it, but they know what the next rule is, and they've got to look at the competitive side. There's three boys who are very competitive, all want to play, and they've also got to think how they include Nicky. Who's, who's not so competitive and is at a different level to them, so it's a mixed ability group. Let's get him out, let's get him out this time. Ethan, you watching? Catch! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's out. So we need to add a rule for Michael, keep the ball below. So if Michael lifts the ball up high, he loses all his runs. Five How many five. runs have you got? Uh, five. Yeah. He's got five runs. Okay. Ready, bowl again. We'll give a couple more. Sports leadership goes hand in glove with this sport education approach because there's children here that may not be able to lead others confidently and ably to plan. They can deliver certain things, but sport education is slightly subtly different in that they're learning how to organise themselves to be part of a team. They feel included as part of the group. Negotiating parts of how the lesson is going and parts of how an activity is going is part of that, and it's an approach that, that works here. What we have to do is, there's going to be two groups and there's going to be one blue. And no matter what, you are not allowed to get the balloon on the floor. Should we have a demonstration down yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. If I demonstrate with a couple of them, you send a couple over. Yeah. The job is to encourage younger pupils and have fun yourselves and make sure it's fun for them. It's, up, it's work for us, but it, us seeing them happy is like fun for us. So we'd rather work and see them happy than just be happy. Well, well, like down, you've got to hit it up. No! Oh. Oh. Look, look at me. Right, Ben, stop a minute. I mainly get my confidence from Mr Wilkins. Stop, stop. stop. Thomas is learning how to be a sports leader. Why did he say well, Ben? At the end of the day, like, it goes well. So. That's the main thing. So turn it right down, Ben. Well done, Ben. And well done for spotting it, Thomas. Sports leaders is the first thing you're safe in. OK. Luca, you know how we played last week? I go every Friday to the little again. ones, the nursery. To show how good you are. And you just do, like, activities. So uh, as you do it, you learn. You learn how to be a sports leader. If you watch Michael, what he's doing... Primary break time down on the lower school playground with G1 is another opportunity outside of lesson time, whatever the weather, whatever the conditions, for sports leaders to get some experience, to go out and do some leading. Go on, Luca! Run, 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 run! Fozzie has been going down there, and I hadn't even realised how frequently until I was looking out my window one day and there she had all the equipment out. And I'm really delighted that she's just carried it on without me, which reflects, I think, sports leadership and sport education, the way it's going here, that pupils are taking the initiative. So uh, that's, that's really pleasing and encouraging. And the others, the younger ones, are seeing that being modelled for them, and they have an expectation of becoming sports leaders. So it, it underpins a lot of what's going on in the PE and school sport in the school. 
they're playing nicely now. What, what could you do to just sit? They're, 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 they've got about 10, they've got about 10 or so, they've done slightly more. Could you get a competition going between the two? About, about so making... Do, so they start at the same time? Making the same same passes. Well, see who keeps... When we plan it together, and, and it's a sport education approach here, where we're empowering the children to, to take charge of their own learning, rather than me just imposing it and bolting it onto them. And it's quite exciting, that, because you, you never quite know where it's going to go. You, you know, I know the, the big picture, and all those strands are always there. The children seem to like that, and they, they, they learn other things besides the obvious. It's learning through PE rather than just learning about PE. We're going into competition time, and, and the one whoever keeps it up longest wins. The classroom assistants that come to every lesson, they join in and they pick up what's going on very quickly. Sometimes they won't actually know what direction I've, I've moved in because I, I can plan on the hoof a little bit and change direction. Right then. Up! Good, let's keep it up in the air. Up, good boy. Up, up, good boy, Ben. Up, up, Ben. Up. Super play today, Helen. Up. I know when things are not going quite as I want them. I think, let's go back to me having fun a little bit. And sometimes it, you realise, well, this is what it was about. Uh, and the children have fun and they enjoy that way because their teachers and their assistants are, are also having fun. Now, come on, team. If we win this, we'll do a celebration this time. Fozzie out. Boost your team up. Right, Sam. Sam, try and hit it up. Sam's serving. Hang on. On the whistle, please, Lily. Off we go, up. Sam. Up. Right, OK. Quality now. Georgie. Well done. <laughs> I think it's going really well because none, none of us except Mr Wilkins has um, like worked with this group. So why, why they're learning to get used to us, we're learning about things about them. Good boy, Ben! Up! Up, up Ben! Up! Up! Yeah. 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 Hey, we've got another one! Yeah. We've got another one! We've got another one! Celebrate with the person opposite Sam. A high five over your shoulder. High five. We've got another win there. High five. Guy Wilkins won the National Teaching Award for Special Needs Teacher of the Year 2004 and it's had a huge impact in terms of raising the profile of the school. I'm fantastically well supported here. It, it's completely uh, throughout the school. Everybody is working towards what's best for the children here and it starts with the head teacher who's given me very much a free reign to to become involved in the school sports partnership and develop PE. I also meet regularly with Guy to talk about how we can extend his role, uh, make sure that he is able to work outside the school as well because that's part of his outreach and make sure that he has the right training and development himself in order to get the most out of what he does. What I want you to think about today... One of the big benefits of being part of the Bromley School Sports Partnership is I'm able to fund and buy in dance expertise. Lucy comes in each week and she's building up towards a dance festival. I couldn't really bring those same skills that Lucy has and the, the kind of movement quality that Lucy's got out of the pupils. Her stimulus for her dance has actually been stretching, reaching, digging and spiking for the game of balloon volleyball. And that's quite fascinating for me to see that happening. And so I learned a lot from that. OK, so let's see that again with the hand. Some lovely movements there, Lucy. I'm going to come okay. in my camera and catch those, those okay. body parts. And I can monitor what's going on, I can take some photos and, and I can improve my own expertise in dance. Leading with really the elbow. sharp. Can you remember that, Katie? Because Katie didn't make I'm constantly looking at the programmes of study to see just where pupils fit into that. And sometimes that means that you're looking at programmes of study below their chronological age. I think they make sense of the world through their movement. And because a lot of them have, have missed out on movement experience as youngsters, that movement experience which we're able to bring in school is uh, helping overcome some of those delays. Can that arm come right over? Oh, I've look just got to take that. a picture that of that. I have so got to take a picture. That is fantastic. Keep it, hold it. The photos are very good for, for me looking back to see what they learned in the last lesson to help kick off the next lesson. Really nice. Can I I'm supported fantastically well by voluntary helpers that come in. Although I, I never like to think that the programme will collapse without them, they, they enhance what goes on tremendously and I value their support and their input tremendously. Well I've always thought about giving back to the community and it's just one way that I can give time so I can actually get a feel for it, I can learn new skills, I can learn things for myself and obviously it's feedback for me and I can pass it on to other children that 
with spe special needs, i.e. my brother, he's a special need person as well. And it's good because it's nice to see smiles from the, the children, learning new stuff, and they make me smile as well. Really nice movements there. In Guy's case particularly, he's still very keen to follow any new initiative. He'll go off and find out about any new strategies or things that we can tap into in terms of getting our kids accreditation. Uh, but he also is a trainer, so he helps to train university students, teaching students who come here to do some of their work. Very collaborative here. The way that we, we run the curriculum is we learn together. And ICT is a really strong thing in the school here, so children will be able to use this. So, for example, if, if they click on their pen there, they'll be able to write their name in here. Becky, Mike and Simon, you've got Sarah and Antonia, they're coming over to work with you. Chris and Lorna, go on, Jamie and Christian. Lauren and Barry, you go and play Polly back then. Leanne and Katie, Chris and Anthony are doing some curling. So get started as soon as you can. Right, now I stand back and I, I look to see how it's going um, and I just step in where it's needed really to try and bring about coaching points with, uh, with the students and occasionally I might stop it and, and draw everybody's attention so the students are getting something from it but, uh, but also our pupils are enjoying the experience. And Leanne is the only non-sighted pupil. So okay. she's just yes, totally no problem. We've got the names sorted. Hi, Sarah, 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 we're ready to play, yeah, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, pupils against oh, the teachers. Oh, you're going to take the teachers. Show them how it's done. Yeah. I like it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, it's... No, the blue bit in the middle. This bit here, and how many points should you give them? Yeah. Right, can you get ready? Listen where the ball's going. Is it dropped off the table? We are, so, are they good at sport? If you assess they are, are they good at sport? Pressure's on, Lorna. That's to remember that tennis is centre, and they've got to remember what you said. It's cross-curriculum as well, because oh, we want to add the, uh, we want them to add up their score at the end. Yeah, no, I think that went off the end of the table there. I think that, what do you reckon? No, no, no. PE is impacting wider than just physical fitness and health. It's looking at the whole curriculum. We're looking at how we use ICT and developing scoring systems with key stage three pupils. How many there are? Are we going to count them in in terms of Three of the games which are our focus games for sports days, boccia hoops, new age curling, and tenpin bowling are now being scored by pupils and they're learning and linking their numeracy work with those games. Sarah scored five with her first go, in frame one, five in the box. If you look at all the CPD stuff at the moment, they're learning through PE. People are saying that's what should be happening, you know, learning thinking skills, problem solving, but unless you actually change what you do slightly, and you, it, it's not going to happen. And this, this yeah. sort of setup, these activities are very good for that. Should we make it easier, Sarah, so you've got a bigger space to aim at, so Simon's got to cover this space? Should we knock any over at all? Oh. Zero, yeah, oh. Right, and five and nothing? If I got five, and I added zero to it... That's much better. Let the pupils do the teaching. Nothing. No. Yeah, I got five. Let, let's... And I got zero. If I added nothing to the, to five, what would I get? Five. Take off the zero. That's it. That's it. Gently here, Katie. Are you listening, Leanne? Leanne? Listen, please. Where's the ball? Is there, is good there, girl, is there, good girl. Is there, is there? Yes, Liam, well done. Can you see what I've done? I've changed the goalpost. She can't get a moving ball, so I could actually say, oh, I'll give up. But what you do is you stop the ball and you tap the ball. And, that, then she, and she did make the move, so she succeeded. And that was where we give the world done, and, the world, and that was well done. I look at one, one activity and I can see that there's some skills are being applied in a situation and, and improved in that situation and that, that is evident. Looking round we saw the, the Leanne trying to stretch and reach the ball and eventually we got to a point where she succeeded. So that, that gives me a measure of where she is. I've already spotted some changes that the teachers, the training teachers have made in the top game, the boxer hoops game. They've added what they call a super hoop. Where is the super hoop uh, Christian? Down in between the hours and the reds. It's in between, it's a silver one, is it? Yeah. That's a nice, nice touch by the teachers, well done. Adds a bit of excitement to the game and a dimension to it. No. Oh. Oh. No. You can see that the children are having great fun and uh, the teachers have got on the spirit of the thing of changing the rules of the game and adapting and they, they don't feel they've got to stick to what, what I showed them, so that's really good, I like that. The student teachers were very creative 
and they weren't frightened to have a go. I think I told them have fun, enjoy themselves, and, and the pupils will enjoy it, and see if you can make that happen. And they did, and they were, they were fantastic. Just stop for a minute. The reason I've stopped you is just to say one well done, because what you're doing is you're involving yourself and you're making changes. We've already had the super hoop added up there, and that's a really brilliant idea. It's made the game more exciting, and it's taken it on a step. Over here, Tony, you, you saw that Mike was very good at bowling, didn't you? So what did you make him do? Because we've got one, two, three, four positions to bowl from. What did you make him do, Antonia? He's... She made, she made Mike bowl all the way from back there to make it harder for Mike to get the, the strike that he was getting fairly easily. So well done to Antonia for spotting uh, what she had to do to change the game. And that's really the spirit of what today's about. So, uh, in terms of the evaluation of that lesson this morning with these trainee teachers, uh, the, the first aim at the beginning of the session was that, that both groups had fun and had an enjoyable session. That, that was prime, and I think they did, both groups did. I could see that without asking too many questions. I just want to say that these two guys have scored two super hoops every single ball they've got in, and yeah. we've got two in. <laughs> I think I'm going to take away a bit of life experience here. You know, uh, hopefully be able to adapt my lessons to suit everyone. And actually working with people in this situation, you know, it's really opened my eyes up. How competitive they are, how, uh, how they can do things, invent games that I couldn't. They know what they're doing. You know, we don't need to babysit them. We're going to come back and we're going to play okay. them again and we're going to beat them next time. OK. <laughs> I think the children take control of their own learning and how important that is. And again, we're not in here to dictate or to modify games for them, they're quite able to do that themselves. Just let them really engage in what they're doing. That's quite a good idea, actually. Did you like that, guy? Yeah, I like that, I do. You've just got to keep it steady. From today, I'll take away with the fact that I've learned how to di differentiate tasks. You can include anyone within any activity and change the, uh, the use of equipment to include anyone. Like, for instance, we were working with a girl today who couldn't see at all. So rather than changing the game or changing any sort of rules, we just simply used a different ball, a bigger ball that contained a, um, a bell in it, so that she could be included in the same way as anyone else. I think what I'll take away from today is having high expectations for all the children that are taking part. Um, if I was to take one thing away with me today, it's that uh, everyone can be included in some way or form. Champion to call. Heads. Snooker is, is an event run by sports leaders and I'm so pleased with the way that has developed since I've been here. When I first came it was, it was run by one of the staff and ownership has gone over to the pupils. Champion of snooker this year, to his, much to his delight, is Thomas and he's also been a main organiser of it. He's been trying to win it since I don't know when and he hasn't and he's had to cope with defeat all the way along the line and this year he's won it. He could have coped with not winning it this year, which I was also pleased, but I was pleased for him. And it's, it's really important to him. Nice park. One, Thomas Clements. Right from half term in the, in the autumn term, they, they do the draw. They decide who's playing on that day. They've decided the rules. They do certificates, they put the programme together, and it runs right up to Christmas. You can reach out as far as he can reach. So, so say Thomas could reach out to there. He, that's how far he could reach, and that's out from how far he could take a shot. The rules are such now that they only bring in fouls and technical bits to the game at the end, and I've lost touch with, with it, so I couldn't referee it anymore because the pupils have taken it on that far. They even bring ex-pupils in to referee the game. This Dominic Benz, like, he's an ex-pupil. We're all very sad that he's left because, like, he's funny and all that stuff. He's very good at football, but he's just practising at snooker, so I think this table sloped. For me, inclusion means everybody should be able to do everything in terms of the curriculum, in terms of activities, in terms of anything you might do in school. And the evidence of this is really the number of our ex-pupils who come back to join in or to help run and help organise PE events for us. It's about all of us working together and all of us celebrating the work we do as a whole school. Newsletter and the certificate that we got for football, recognising football in the school. And I thought it actually started with you, Dom, 
when you think back that you representing England and the success that you've had and it's filtered its way down. What was it like being a ref? Because you haven't done a lot of refereeing, have you? It was different because I'm one of them who gives stick to all referees and... So did it, it, give, you, did it, it give you a chance it, to, to see know what it was like on the other side? Yeah, it just and gave me... back yeah. well. One of the things that we're trying... We, we say that our PE and school sport programme reinforces other things in our curriculum. Now, I know all of you probably get a programme when you go to a match or you pick up the newspaper yeah, and read yeah. about it. Is that is that something that you, you actually develop your, uh, your own... The other skills, your reading and your... your As I love football, I just thought, let me pick up a paper. It all starts with paper and read about Arsenal or whoever is in... Uh, uh, yeah, and see, see how... And it just helps with other sides of life to, apart from football. Have you ever worked out the points, the goals for, yeah, goals yeah, against? Yeah. Is, that, is that good? Here I can see the impact every day and it's, it's wider than just that lesson they come along. It, it's a whole whole child thing here. Uh, you're, you're reinforcing all sorts of basic skills, that, that their numeracy, their literacy, their, their, their confidence and their self-esteem, their communication skills, um, to speak up in lessons, to take the lead. Like how, how big is the capacity at the library? 38,000. 38, so you know 38,000 yeah. and you know what it looks like. Yeah. What's nice for me at this point though is to have seen all of you really taken your football that you did in school beyond and you're learning things that you can't learn here anymore. You said it's more than just football now. Do you yes. remember when I, um, I said, what do you mean, Thomas? Uh, and you told that, me... I, I didn't want that to come across in the wrong way, but that come across as in, like, I'm making friends there now. Through your football. Yeah, through football. Yeah. And I want... To... Our ethos is one where we support and encourage everybody. We're very, very big on celebrating achievement and celebrating any achievement in any field. So we always focus on what you can do and what you can achieve and more than that, what you can give back to others. So we actually expect our young people, even though they've got disabilities, not just to be receiving things, but actually to be participating, to be leading, to be giving their views. And they know that we value their views and we respect them. Yeah, they've done well. Well done. The success that they achieve, either it be at international level or, or even at the, the first steps that they make in, in achieving some sports skill or something that they haven't done before, that gives me satisfaction. When they leave school, some of them may not be able to get jobs easily, but they'll have something to, to make their lives whole and, uh, and, and lifelong learning, really. You learn through a lot of sport, and, uh, and sport, sport is, is, is an ongo ongoing thing, so you never, you never ever stop learning. <laughs>